Do you like to go fast with your RC rock crawlers? I do, but not all the time. But when I do, I like to choose a rock racer. And today I am extremely excited to test out the Red Cat Racing Wendigo. Today we are gonna be rock racing. This is gonna be a pretty cool rig to test out because it is a brand new rock racer on the market. And to tell you the truth, we really haven't had a true rock racer released for a really long time. Red Cat Racing has designed this guy from the ground up. It comes with a brushless hobby wing system, a 25 kilogram servo, and is essentially ready to run except for adding your batteries and probably batteries to the radio. Let's see. Eh, it'll, we'll figure that out here in a minute. But it's a very well printed box. It's, uh, I, I kind of like the, the glossy print on top of a matte print. Uh, you know, and we're not buying it for the box, of course, at least not in this case. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good looking. It's something that if it was on the shelf, that I would take a look at it and probably say, hey, this is a, you know, this is a quality rig. But uh, just going through it, you know, 10th uh, scale, it's got some scale accessories, uh, four wheel drive, brushless, no need to wrench on it. Look at there, it even shows you no need to wrench on it, waterproof electronics, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get right into it. I didn't get this thing for the box. Oh, it does have some neat uh, information on there though. Uh, 2.91 to one gear ratio in the axles. So these are not portal axles. These are regular old straight axles. So do y'all have any rock racers? Really the, uh, the only ones that I have right now are the original Axial Wraith. And maybe you could consider the TRX-4 since it has a two-speed rock racer. All right, so here we go. It's got the instruction booklet. It's got our little scale accessory pack. Looks like some sand ladders, a, uh, some sort of jerry can, some fire extinguishers. We got some extra rod ends and the uh, wheel nut wrench there, the four-way wrench. Um, I don't know how often we're gonna be using sand ladders with a rock racer, but that's still cool anyway, they included it. An instruction booklet. You know what we do with these guys. Nothing. All right, so a very utilitarian boxing here. Um, just slides right into the box like this, comes right out. If you want to transport it, I would actually suggest that you could keep these box boxes, box parts, and use it for transport. Um, a little bit of rash up here on the top during shipping, which is why they put this on. So, good on your red cat. Perfect, looking good. And, hey, not even zip tied in, I love that. Just pull it right out. Uh, I'm really not a fan of rigs being zip tied into the boxes. I understand it's great for shipment and all that, but when you're designing the box around the rig to ship, you can just design the box around the rig to ship and you don't need the extra zip ties. And let's see if they included batteries for the radio. I'm gonna say they probably didn't. So we got a bind plug here, handy dandy. And no batteries for the radio. So you will need your lithium battery with Dean's compatible T plug, or your choice if you're gonna solder on a new one, and four AA batteries to get this guy running. We've got some AA batteries that we will install before we go outside and test it. And uh, let's just take a look at this rig here. Little suspension travel shows me that the wheelbase does change, but uh, we're gonna notice that when we're actually rocking it. I don't know, we'll find out when we test it. Uh, a little bit of body roll shows us that we do in fact have just a little bit of bump steer. Just a little bit of bump steer on this. So let's get these wheels straight for you. Not much bump steer on this side and pan hard mount side, there's a little bit of bump steer. So not quite a perfect steering geometry, but considering that it is a chassis mounted setup and a long travel, you know, that's not too bad. That is not too bad. You know, I'm being kind of nitpicky on that. And let's look at the rear. Hey, you know what they did? They included 
a torsion bar on here or whatever it's called. Let me know in the comments what this thing is called. I can never seem to remember it. Uh, so what this little uh, ladder bar or whatever it's called, it's not a ladder bar. You're definitely gonna have to let me know in the comments what this is. Uh, what this allows is for a softer suspension setup that gives you lots of up and down travel, but it stiffens on your articulation. And that is very important, especially on a rock racer. You have seen me install these guys on the Wraith 1.9. I have one on my Wraith 2.2. And in my opinion, it is one of those suspension things that should probably be on most rigs these days. Um, it really lets you have enough wheel speed to bump over an object and not be too floppy in the articulation. No, it's just more predictable. So really happy that Red Cat included that uh, torsion bar. Torsion bar, let me know. Let me know what they're called. Uh, really, really happy to see that they included that on the design here. Oh, this is not typical Red Cat plastic. This is a nice hard nylon. Yeah, let's see. See if it's the same nylon everywhere. Bumpers are a little softer, as they should be. Nice hard nylon. Uh, drive shafts, hard nylon as well. The uh, skids on the side, the, these rock rails are a little bit softer, just a touch softer, as they probably should be because they're going to be bashing against the rocks. We don't want those to, to, uh, to bust. And let's just look. Let's get the body out for you too. All right, so uh, I would suggest that you add some zip ties to the end of your body pins so that you can remove them without breaking off fingernails. Yeah, there we go. I will definitely be adding a little zip tie to grab those with. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at this body here. Nice scale look to it. Uh, you know, Bronco-ish maybe. Definitely rock racer like. They got the drivers in there. Let's see if the, do the heads move. Hey, look at that. The heads move. Uh, if you wanted to, you could probably figure out how to install a servo underneath to make the driver's head move with your steering wheel. So that's pretty cool. Um, pretty hard plastic on the tube cage. They've got a little radiator set up on the back. Just. Uh, Oh, and th there's a uh, <laughs> there's a GPS unit. Definitely a rock racer. Uh, your uh, your pilot here. He he, you know, tells you where to go on the GPS. That's neat. That's pretty neat. I like that. I like the looks of this body. I really do. All right. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the rig. Really big shocks. I like those aluminum bodied shocks with a threadable adjustment on here for our preload. Uh, so the front seems a little softer than the rear, which on a rock racer is about right. We will see how it handles outside. And here is the brushless motor made by Hobbywing for Red Cat. And let's see, can't tell if it's a two pole or a four pole for cost reasons, uh, which this one is retailing right now at $390 for ready to run with brushless. Not too bad of a deal, honestly. It's, uh, but I would assume that it, it might be a two pole. I'll take it apart and find out later. But uh, nice suspension, really like those shocks. Um, like I said, threaded shock bodies on there. Pretty hard, that, yeah, that's a hard nylon for the shock towers, so there's no, there's no flexing on this frame. Really beefy C-channel frame too. Wow, yeah. That is the largest C-channel frame on the market right now, I do believe. Maybe there's something that, that I haven't tried out yet, but that guy is beefy and made for some punishment. And then a full-size battery tray here, and of course our Hobbywing ESC right there. 14-gauge uh, wires. For what this is, I would say that you should probably be running 13 or 12-gauge wires, but you know, I can armchair quarterback this thing all day. I'm sure it actually runs fine. And like uh, Dean's compatible T-plug. I think most people are running the XT60s at this point in the market. A little, uh, you know, a little more uh, common. But that's a nice plug too. It'll work. I'll just have to make an adapter for it. 
so full size pack this is actually a shorty from helios 5200 3s 50 c pack a little bit shorter than a normal pack because this one fits in my capra perfectly this is an ultimate capra pack and since i already have it and it's charged and i get these with xt60s with a little dean's adapter So fits in there. There's a little bit of forwards to backwards movement. Probably just tie it down and see if it doesn't move. Uh, but what we could do is use a little bit of double-sided Velcro to keep it from moving back and forth. That's also an option. I'll just cinch her down. Now, they call it waterproof on the box. However, I would like to note that our RX plugs are right here and they are exposed on the outside of our radio box. So what I would suggest if you do plan to get it into water is to use dielectric grease. This is CRC. You can get it at pretty much any auto parts store, even Walmart. Uh, this is what we use in the shop to add dielectric grease to plugs. I would suggest that you put dielectric not only on these radio ports here, but also probably on this plug, pretty much any plug that'll get water that you don't want to get messed up. Even on your balance plug of your battery, it's a good idea to coat that guy up, slather it up so that you don't have any corrosion problems long term because the balance plug is rather delicate. They're only made for a limited number of plugging and unplugging cycles and the pins are super tiny. So any corrosion will end up ruining the plug pretty quick. So just a forewarning, that is what I would recommend. So that's, that's pretty much the rig. Um, Axles look great, honestly. Uh, Y'all probably want to see them compared to some other axles, so let's just pull them up on the table here and see how they look, you know, size-wise, scale-wise. Wraith 2.2. This is essentially what the Wendigo, the Wandango, is replacing, I suppose. This is no longer made. All right, so it's larger. I would almost say it's a, a eighth scale, almost. The wheelbase is just slightly shorter. And if we look at those axles, give you all a, a front shot there. They're pretty close in size. They have a slightly offset pumpkin. Uh, looks a little stouter though, honestly. We have, let's see, what do we have here? We do have universals, um, so that's nice. They did not throw in regular old dog bones. The neck down is a little tight. Um, we'll see how they hold up. They'll probably be fine, especially with the stock system. And I would like to address that this Wendigo, Winona Ryder, is made in Taiwan. And this is a first for Red Cat. Red Cat is primarily a made in China company. And going to Taiwan tells me a few things. First, this is all new tooling. This is not just some stuff that they had laying around that they are redoing with another body on top. Number two, this was an opportunity for them to increase the quality on their parts. Just judging by the plastics, just judging by the tires, I would say that the overall quality of this is probably gonna be the best that Red Cat has put out. And the engineer that designed this rig did tell me that they have specified higher quality grades for all of the metal parts and the plastic, you know, pretty much everything, but they didn't wanna have something that was weak and would break. And when you have a rock racer, cheap steel twists. So they obviously didn't want that and have told me at least that they use higher quality steel in the drivetrain. Uh, so I'll take that at face value. If that's what they say, then I certain, certainly believe them on that. And the testing will tell us, of course, because if you throw this sort of power at, let's say a Gen 7, it's gonna break drivetrain components really fast. Uh, the Gen 8 did better, however, the Gen 8 still had some issues on there, and since this is a totally new design, with totally new materials, obviously better plastics, obviously better plastics, I have a feeling that this guy is going to hold up well. So, I am pretty excited to try this guy out. And before we do, I will compare one more rig. So just to give you a comparison on the axles and the rig size, this is much larger than a TRX-4. It's wider than a TRX-4. It has bigger tires, of course, than a TRX-4. 
And as you can see, the axles are much wider and pretty dang beefy looking. Pretty dang beefy. Uh, so one would hope that it is going to be as stout as the TRX4. Now it's time to go outside and try to beat this guy up. We are outside for our testing of the Red Cat Racing Windigo, Windango, Wingadinga Dang Dang. And let's look at the wheel speed first. Or the low speed control. Let's get some low speed control. All right, so not the best low speed control, but it is a sensorless system. And, and that, uh, that starting and stopping is actually not me, that's the ESC. And now some wheel speed. Oh! Balloons the tires. This is the first crawler that can balloon the tires right out of the box. Yes. I think it's going to be fast. So let's, uh, let's check out our full speed. Nice suspension too. One more time. Yes, this thing is a proper rock racer. So let's just ease into it first. Let me get my steering trim right. There we go. That's about straight. Oh yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even full bore. All right, we'll do. We'll go back. We'll go by again. <laughs> All right, proper rock racer. Check. 3S lipo. 3S. So uh, it's 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 kind of hard. It's kind of hard to keep this guy under control at full speed here, but I'll try. Yes, this is going to take some skill. <laughs> uh, rock racer indeed. So the torque twist actually isn't very bad. Uh, let's do some full, full pulls here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there's a little bit of torque twist on a full pull. There's uh, some, some backflip action there. Yes. All right, uh, well, perfect time to uh, try again. It's always a perfect time. Oh, can I, can I, oh no, I'm turtled. So this is a proper basher for sure. I, I wouldn't recommend this as a rock crawler without electronics changes and probably gearing change too. I'm not sure exactly what the Winona Ryder comes with with stock ratio, but I do know you can go as high as 45 to one, which would make it a crawler territory. Uh, better ratio than some of the other rigs that have come out recently. Um, I would also like to note that this yard is very wet. This is gonna be a good test of the waterproof electronics without you know getting fully submerged at least oh no i couldn't react in time technical error i don't think the straps held the battery in well enough Well, it, it looks like we're gonna have to put a little spacer to really deal with the, the bashing that this guy can dish out because this shorty pack just kind of slipped out. And yeah, I'm using a shorty pack. So that's my fault, really. We'll just stick that right back in and pretend nothing happened. I did hit the tree at almost full bore. I don't know if I was in the way of the camera there, but uh, yeah, I couldn't quite react in time. I wasn't paying attention. When you got this much speed on the rig, you gotta pay more attention. All right, uh, let's just get her into the rocks and see what happens. The low speed control on this guy isn't so great. Uh, let's, let's show you the throttle. I'll just throttle trim up here a little bit. So you see the starting and stopping. I'm not doing that. I'm not even touching on the remote. That's what the sensorless speed controller is doing. No, is it starting, it's stopping, it's starting, it's stopping. 
which is to be expected with a lot of lower cost controllers. This isn't a Sidewinder 4 or a Mamba X, which would actually really give this guy the ability to crawl. You know, it'll, it'll bash through the rocks. It'll, it'll, it'll do some easy sections. <laughs> not uh, not exactly the smoothest and I'm sure that the ESC is going to be extremely hot <laughs> but uh, honestly you know from what I can tell the geometry is pretty decent for crawling it's very stable uh, you know it's, it's kind of like the the gen 8 as far as being stable on the rocks which is cool all right, let's see if I can kind of come up a hard line here. Yeah. Yes, we can. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of promising. Oh, oh, oh. Sensorless, sensorless smoothness. You know we're all about the low speed control here. Uh, so I will definitely be putting a rock race system in this that is censored. Oh, I almost had it. There we go. Didn't even need to touch it. Plenty of wheel speed. Oh, she's getting muddy. Oh, you're ruining my crawler course, Winnebago. Yeah. <laughs> rock, rock racing. Oh, we could, we could call this bashing. There we go. The sensorless, the sensorless gives us absolutely no favors. So wait, what do you, what do you think, puppy? Are you a fan? Are you a fan? Maybe, maybe you're more of a fan of pepperoni. I'll have to bring some pepperoni next time. All right, let's let's check out the uh, the startup under a bind. <laughs> All right. All right, she's still going. She's still going. Is anything loose yet? No. Wheels are nice and tight. Body's a little rattly, but you know, it's a Lexan body, so whatever. Well, so far I haven't killed anything and I'm not being easy on it. Let's see how the, uh, can I feel the ESC temperature? Okay, so I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, ESC temperature on the, the side of the heatsink there. It's not burning me. It does have a fan that's constantly on. Uh, so that's good for the ESC, especially this application, uh, especially being sensorless, getting into the rocks. It's just, uh, you know, about as bad of a situation as it could be for an ESC. There, there doesn't seem to be any drag brake. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Good low speed control, lots of modulation here. I'm definitely joking. And our steering, our steering seems to be, uh, maybe it slipped or something, but it's not, it's not steering nearly as much in, in one direction as, as, as it is the other now. Uh, so we're gonna turn up our dual rates just a little bit. It actually comes with them turned down. Hmm. doesn't seem to help <laughs> so I've got the uh, the dual rates up so much that it's actually making the rig pick up the, <laughs> the wheel <laughs> oh yeah oh okay I may have spoke too soon about no breakages I figured out why our steering wasn't going so well in one direction let's just uh, you know maybe maybe come up on this guy give her a look so I imagine when I hit that tree at full bore, it may have broken this piece. So there's a plastic piece that goes into the front of the frame rail there, and uh, you can maybe see that servo mount's just, just moving. 
So that's, uh, you know, these things aren't indestructible. I have been beating the crap out of it. And that sort of thing, you know, it's kind of to be expected when you full bore into a tree. It's certainly functional. The piece is likely available from Red Cat. And uh, more than likely, you'll see some aluminum aftermarket for that. Of course, if you make that piece of aluminum, what's going to break next? You know, that's always the question. So um, there we go. While not quite indestructible, I have really given the Wingadango, the, the Windigo, a pretty hard beating today. Um, pretty fun rig. What I would like to do to it is to uh, put a censored system in there. I'm going to go nuts and put a proper rock racing system, the Puller Pro 4100R, which is a more than 550 length as far as the power is concerned. Uh, it's, a, it's a 550 length motor in the can size, but a lot of, a lot of stator inside. Uh, so I'm going to put that in there combined with a Mamba X and then probably throw one of my uh, servos in there, SHV 500, the V3, just so I don't need a BEC for it. Although the Mamba X has a strong BEC, um, but my servo runs on 3S directly, so that's what we will be doing. Overall, uh, for the money for a rock racer, I'd say this is actually a pretty good value. Um, their plastics are definitely much improved on that servo mount. They did go with a harder plastic, which is, I believe, why it broke in the fashion that it did. But again, y'all saw that hit to the tree, I think. That, that was uh, usually something is going to break at that sort of impact. I haven't been nice to it at all. But the electronics haven't burned out. The servo hasn't burned out going in the rocks, getting it bound up. It's, uh, again, I haven't been nice to it. So overall, this is an extremely fun rig. I, you know, I'm not exactly a basher type, but uh, what would make it more fun for me is a, definitely the censored system. I'm gonna gear down so that I have the same wheel speed, maybe a little less, even with a higher KV motor. And that's gonna make it more suitable for getting into the rocks and, and to be an all trail style of vehicle. But the size of this guy is gonna make it really capable. And uh, I, just can't, I just can't help myself here. It's, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, sensorless, sensorless. Not quite. It's, oh, can sensorless get out? Yes, there we go. Again, not very good low speed control. But, uh, you know, I think at this point we will uh, call it. I'll call this a success. I even broke some parts. And to leave y'all, I'm going to wheelie off into the sunset. So, thanks for tuning in. If you do have any questions, post them down below. And as always, have a good day. So I know I said that I was done, but this thing is fun. I've been bashing it on the rocks even after we stopped. It's still going. Yeah, maybe it has a little broken part right now, but uh, oh, now it's dragging the battery. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would give this one the A-OK, -okay, the two thumbs up, the Winona Ryder of the RC car world. Yes, I like this rig. This is going to have a place in my stable, a special place in my heart, and a special censored system to make this thing extra rad. So, again, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.